Remember that when we add or subtract fractions, we first need to find a common denominator. So in this case, I can see that my lowest common denominator is four. So I'm going to multiply that denominator by two in order to get to four, and then I need to multiply the numerator by the same amount to keep it equivalent. Two divided by two is one. When I multiply by one, I'm not changing the value. And then we add the numerators together, the denominator stays the same, and if possible, you can reduce. We begin the same way as with multiplication and division. We're going to factor all numerators and denominators, and then when adding and subtracting, we need to determine what the lowest common denominator is. So we're going to practice practice that piece first. So let's say that my two denominators are 3n and 4n. What is the smallest number that 3 and 4 can divide into evenly? It's going to be 12. And then we're basically going to squish these monomials together. So we're going to have an m times an n. Again, what's the smallest number that 5 and 10 both divide into evenly? It's going to be 10. And you can see that we have 1x and an x squared. If this is the lowest common denominator, I need to be able to multiply this term by something in order to get to this term. So if we multiply by an x here, I can get to an x squared that is going to be common with that term. And then we also need a y. I can multiply this term by y and that becomes my lowest common denominator. In terms of binomials, remember you want to bracket your binomials first and those stay together. So if this is my first one, I'm going to have to multiply it by the other in order to get a common denominator. Likewise, I can multiply this denominator by this one. So my lowest common denominator, we're basically putting all brackets together. All right, so step one, factor all numerators and denominators. We're going to bracket any binomials, and we don't have any, so there's nothing we can factor in this first question. Step two, we need to determine the lowest common denominator. So we're gonna take a look and see, okay, what's the smallest number that six and four will both divide into evenly, and it's going to be 12. And then if you look at the variables, we have an x squared and an x. What's the smallest variable? Both of those will divide into evenly, and we can see that it's going to be x squared. So I'm going to write both of those with my lowest common denominator. And then we're going to say, okay, what did we multiply 6x squared by in order to get to 12x squared? And we can see that we multiplied it by 2. So to keep my fraction equivalent, I'm going to multiply the numerator by the same value. 3 times 2 is going to give me 6. Now I'm going to take a look at the next one. I'm going to say, what did I multiply 4x by to get to 12x squared? And we can see that 4x times 3x gives us that 12x squared. So we're going to multiply the numerator by the same value to keep it equivalent. 1 times 3x is 3x. Now, when we go to add fractions, remember we're going to keep the denominator the same and we're going to add the numerators. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to keep my denominator the same and we're going to bring those numerators together. Now, the next thing we need to do is figure out what the non-permissible values are. So you can see in our denominator, x cannot equal zero. And again, because each of these denominators is the same, I've just written it up here. And now we actually need to add and subtract the numerators. I can't combine those together because they're not like terms. So now I'm down to my final step, which is to simplify. So I'm going to again bracket the numerator because it's a binomial, and I'm gonna to look to see is there a greatest common factor that I can pull out of there, and there is. So we're gonna take that out, and then we're back to what we did before. We're gonna say, okay, there's no binomial on the denominator to cancel the one on the numerator with, but can I reduce those monomials? Dividing each of them by three, three divided by three leaves me with one, and then I times the binomial, and then 12 divided by three leaves me with four, and I still have the x squared. Let's try another example here. So step number one, bracket any binomials and see if you can factor them. So in this case, there is no greatest common factor and we cannot factor as a difference of squares. Now we need to determine the lowest common denominator. Remember, binomials have to stay together. So I'm basically going to need one of each binomial. And then I'm gonna take a look at the first fraction. We're gonna say, okay, we had a denominator of n minus three. What did we multiply that by in order to get our common denominator? And we can see that we multiplied by n plus two. So I need to multiply the numerator by n plus two to keep it equivalent. And so that gives us six times n plus two. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. We're gonna say, okay, what did we multiply n plus two by in order to get our common denominator? And we can see that we multiplied this by n minus three. So I need to multiply my numerator by the same thing to keep it equivalent. And that, that gives me a numerator on the second fraction of four times n minus three. Now, here's what you wanna watch. If we were within this one fraction, 
to cancel n minus 3 and n minus 3, we should be left with 4 over n plus 2, which is what we started with originally. If we cancel n plus 2 and n plus 2, we're going to be left with 6 over n minus 3, which is what we started with originally. That's how you know we're equivalent. But what we cannot do is cancel these. The whole point of coming up with equivalent fractions is so that we have the common denominator. So be really careful. If you are adding or subtracting, we now need to bring these together and actually subtract the numerators before you cancel. Determine the non-permissible values, and now we actually need to add or subtract. So we're going to keep the denominator the same, and we're going to subtract the numerators. Now, ignore the denominator for a second, and we need to actually simplify this. So we're going to get rid of the brackets, and then we're going to combine our like terms. Distribute the 6, and then this is a negative 4. So we've got negative 4n, and then a negative times a negative. Make sure you watch. That needs to become a positive. Now we're going to combine our like terms together. 6n minus 4n is 2n. 12 plus 12 is going to give us 24, and the denominator comes along for a ride. Now you have actually added and subtracted the numerators. So the final step Step is to simplify, so we're going to re-bracket this numerator, we're going to look for a greatest common factor, and then reduce. After removing a 2, we can see that this bracket isn't going to cancel with anything on the denominator, and we only have a 2 divided by 1, which is still 2, so this is our simplified answer when we subtract. All right, so we can see we have an algebraic expression that we're going to simplify involving addition. They all start the same way, so we're going to bracket our binomials, and then we're going to factor them. Once they're fully factored, we're going to find our lowest common denominator. So we can see that each of them contain a factor of y plus 4. We also have a factor of y minus 4. So our lowest common denominator is going to be y plus 4 times y minus 4. And then I'm not changing anything with my first denominator to get my common denominator. On the second fraction, however, I am multiplying this by y minus 4. So the first one is going to stay the same. This one, because we're multiplying by y minus 4, I'm going to multiply the numerator by y minus 4 to keep it equivalent. So that's going to give me 4 times y minus 4 on that one, and 32 is going to stay on that one. Now, in terms of my non-permissible values, y cannot equal negative 4, which would make that factor 0. y cannot equal positive 4, which would make that factor 0. So maybe I'll just go up to the top and we'll put down y cannot equal positive or negative 4, and we're going to circle our restriction. And then we're going to now bring them together over a common denominator. And then we need to now simplify the numerator. So remember, you are not canceling anything. We have to first add the numerators and we don't cancel until the very, very, very end. So we're going to get rid of the brackets by distributing in this 4. And when we do that, we're going to end up with the 4y minus 16. And then we're going to take a look and say, okay, do we have any like terms that we can add together? And we can see that 32 minus 16 is 16. And then we still have this 4y. The denominator just keeps being carried down. And now, once you've gotten to this step, you've now combined your like terms and we've gotten down to here. So now we go to simplify. Is there a common factor that we can divide out of the numerator? So maybe let's just re-bracket this and we can see that we can pull out a 4. And now at this stage, you can see that 4 plus y is going to divide out with y plus 4. So those are the same sign, same number. Those are going to cancel. And now we're going to end up with the 4 divided by y minus 4. We don't really need the brackets anymore once we get to the end. But that is now our final solution. The number one mistake people will make is right here. They're going to cancel that. And when you do that, you're going to notice what you're left with is what we originally started with. The whole point when we add or subtract is getting that common denominator and then actually adding or subtracting the numerator. So because of that, this allows us to get a common denominator. We now need to bring those fractions together over the common denominator. And then we need to add by combining like terms. So make sure that you do not cancel cancel until the very end when we go to simplify. I had to shuffle that one over a little bit. My next one here, again, first thing, this is an expression. All we can do is simplify. So we're going to bracket any binomials, and we're going to see if we can factor. We're then going to find the lowest common denominator, state the non-permissible values, and then bring them together. I'm going to get you to pause the video and see if you can try this one. 
In factoring the binomials, we can see that there's no greatest common factor, but we recognize that is a difference of squares, and there's no greatest common factor here, nor is this term a perfect square, so there's nothing we can do with that one. I take a look and see, okay, my lowest common denominator, I need n minus 1, now that's in both of them, but I also need this n plus 1. So in the terms of my first denominator, nothing changes from the original to my common denominator, so I can just write 2n on top. In terms of my second denominator, I started with n minus 1, now we also have n plus 1. So that tells me that I multiplied the denominator by n plus 1, I'm multiplying the numerator by n plus 1 to keep it equivalent. So now I have a 4 times n plus 1. Now I'm going to take a look at my non-permissible values. n cannot equal negative 1 or positive 1, so I've got that written up here as the values not allowed for n. And then once we get to this point and we have a common denominator, now we're actually going to subtract the fractions. So we're going to bring them together over the lowest common denominator. So the denominator stays the same and now we need to either subtract or add the numerator. So you can even cross this out and you can see that if this is all we have, we first need to get rid of the brackets. So we're going to distribute that negative 4 into the brackets. And when we do that, we're going to have 2n minus 4n minus 4. So just watch that sign. It's a negative times a positive is a negative. And then that all is written over the denominator. So once you get that common denominator, you're pretty much just bringing it along for the ride the whole way down. Now we're going to take a look at the numerator. Again, you might even want to put your finger over that denominator. We're going to look for like terms. 2n minus 4n is negative 2n. Minus 4 does not have a like term. And again, we're just bringing this denominator along. We're not cancelling anything. Now, once we've actually subtracted, now we're going to see, okay, is there any way that we can simplify this? So I'm going to re-bracket my numerator. And I notice that there is a greatest common factor I can pull out of there. Now, notice here, I pulled out a negative 2. A negative times a positive gets me back to that negative value. So you can see that we factor that. And because this n plus 2 has nothing on the bottom to cancel, and we have a negative 2 divided by 1, that's done. That is the most I can do. And how about we try one now that involves both subtraction and multiplication? So I'm going to begin the same way. Any binomial that I see, I'm going to bracket it, and then I'm going to factor everything that's factorable. All right, now in terms of order of operations, we have to simplify each bracket first. So there's nothing that will cancel in this bracket. We're multiplying here. So I'm just going to bring this down, and I can see that in my second bracket, I'm subtracting. So I need to first get a common denominator, and then I'm going to write my equivalent fractions here so I can subtract them. And then I can probably also do my non-permissible values at the same time. For every factor in the denominator, I've looked to see what would make that zero, and there are three factors. We have three non-permissible values because each of those factors is different. And then in terms of this bracket, because this is the one I'm dealing with to simplify, I'm going to bring them together over a lowest common denominator, and then I'm going to distribute to get rid of those brackets, and again, watch the sign. It's a negative times a positive is a negative. A negative times a negative, make sure you have a positive there. And now we're going to see if we can simplify any Thing. So I can see that I've got a 3x plus a 3x, so let's combine those terms together. So we happen to end up with a trinomial here, so let's bracket this and see if we can factor it. Now there is no greatest common factor. If I multiply a negative 1 times c 9, are there two numbers that multiply to negative 9 and add to 6? And the only numbers that multiply to negative 9 are 1 and 9, 3 and 3. No combination of negative or positive will give us that 6 value. So this is not factorable. So now we have fully simplified the bracket on the right, and the bracket on the left is already fully simplified. And we can see that we're multiplying. So when I multiply, I'm going to multiply all the numerators, all the denominators, and cancel. So a faster way to do this would be to say, okay, I've got x plus 3 on top, x plus 3 on bottom. Those divide out to get 1. x minus 3 divides with x minus 3 to get 1. And then we're left just with this trinomial over this binomial. And we could keep the brackets around both the numerator and denominator, but we don't have to. Just make sure you're not cancelling pieces, then you're ripping that body apart.